These persons, whom the citizens of Rome instinctively consider suspicious, come for the most part from Palestine and Galilee. In Rome, these Christians live in abject poverty, far beyond that of our poorest citizens. They take on all tasks, the most menial, degrading and foul, which no Roman would deign to accept. They share their beds with whomever happens along in search of work, as if they lived in desert tents. Although said Christians seem neither to have instigated nor be suspect of crimes against persons or goods, one cannot exclude in this intrigue of tribal connivance and urban encampment that criminals of every ilk find refuge among them, and that these religious fanatics perhaps unknowingly harbour enemies of the empire. The information I have gathered shall be compiled in a detailed memorandum, suggesting also the provisions and sanctions considered necessary for the safety of our citizens. Isaias, let me hear it. Start from the beginning, the salutation. To Nero Claudius Caesar Drusius Britannicus, Emperor of Rome. And Saviour of the world. Also on the other scrolls. In a few days it will be obligatory to call Caesar that on all official documents. Yes, Master. Saviour of the world by legal decree of the Senate. It's not very clear if he's already saved it or is about to. Kylo Colonides. Drink, Master. But it's vile. It'll do you good. Oh. I've read the reports of the Palatine Guards, Kylo, but there was no trace of what you say. Uh, this isn't the only strange thing. Most noble protector of our city. Don't you find the sequence of events curious? Yesterday evening, Elijah Kalina was arrested in the house of Aulus Plautius. In the Prefect of Rome, there was nothing about it. And yet news circulates with a wealth of detail in that neighborhood of foreign rabble crawling with Christians. Kylo... How can you be so sure I know nothing of it? If you did, you wouldn't be here, O oh, luminous protector of our country. Hmm. Where would I be, then? At the Empress Palace, interrogating the prisoner, Elijah Kalina, as is your right, your prerogative. It seems the girl is being held, together with common slaves, in the undergrounds of the palace, in the cubicles adjacent to the laundry rooms. It was easy coming by this bit of information, but I trust in your generosity all the same, O oh, noble Padanus. Make way for the litter of the prefect of Rome. Make way. Scatter, 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 scatter. Oh, on with you. Padanius is litter. Padanius is litter, prefect of Rome. Let us make pace. Scatter. You two, go on. Go on. Make way. Litter of the prefect of Rome. Make way. No, no, no. I can't go on like this. I shall refuse. Mark my words. I mean it. The more I give out, the more they need. Everybody makes demands, and I have to satisfy them. All right, then. Two wardrobe slaves for the patrician tunics, and two for the city tenders. Oh, I'm still missing a buckle maker. Pearl polishers. Slaves to buff the golden vessels. Uh, an epicure for the wild game. Two strong masseurs, and one delicate one. A delicate one, you understand? Yes. You do? Oh, where am I going to find one? Aren't you fledgers? Unfortunately. What are you doing here? My master died and willed me to the emperor. You should have presented yourself. You're a perfume maker. I've been looking for one for over a month. No, I lost my touch. My nose has nose has lost a scent. Report at once to Epaphrodite's embassy. will have her take you straight to the apartments of the divine Popeye. Did you hear? The liar said he lost his scent. Oh, sorry, sorry. Why should you care about Fayon and his troubles? Don't say that, Fayon. You know it's not so. She's over there. Huh? The one you're looking for. Have you spoken to her? I've tried. But she answers in her native language so that nobody can understand her. Mm. 
My name is Pedanius. I'm the Prefect of Rome, and uh, I've come to ask a few questions. Janjatsem's Niki Mjuvic. Napravde. Skoda, Chajane Matipomor. You said, I'll not speak with anyone. And I believe my answer was, I'm sorry, but perhaps I can help you. I don't need anything. Huh? I see you haven't changed. I don't know you. You're wrong. Why do you speak that way to me? Let's just say that you can't remember. The truth is, I spent nearly three years near Kalitz. It was the border at that time. Your homeland began there. I even remember when your father handed you over to Aurelius Potius. It was said that you would be a, a hostage, a guarantee that the border would be respected. Isn't it absurd huh, that a child like you be made a hostage? I always thought that your father was looking for a way to save your life. Two days later, as he was going home, his camp was attacked by those who wanted the war, and all were killed. <laughs> you were only this high, like this, or perhaps smaller. Scared. You never cried. Then for a long time, no matter what you might be doing, suddenly you would stop and call out a name that no one understood. As if you were expecting someone to come at any moment to take you away. Why is it you're saying these things to me? What do you want? Aulis and Pomponia love you like a daughter. Is that why I was brought here? No. But you must help them. There are charges against them. New accusations? Serious accusations. Nero has decided to destroy them. Oh, that's absolutely untrue. The Emperor's clemency is great. One must only prove worthy of it. What can I do? Testify. The truth. What truth? There are rumors. There are witnesses who say that the House of Aulus and Pomponia recently welcomed an old and distinguished man. A man of authority, shall we say. I want to be straightforward with you. As far as the identity of this person goes, we have only suspicions. Those who would harm you and wish you ill keep telling Nero that the old guest in question is Seneca. Yet Aulus and Seneca Paulus and Seneca never trusted each other, and so if Seneca has accepted the hospitality of Aulus, the only reason, it would appear, is a political alliance, a criminal plot against the Emperor. In which case, Aulus is risking his life. <laughs> but fortunately, there is also a completely innocuous version of the events. It has been said that the old man, the guest in the house of Aulus and Pomponia, was a certain Simon, or, or Peter, a Galilean, who has led a rather adventurous life. It seems that from time to time, some Roman families, out of curiosity, let's say, invite this old foreigner to hear him recount personally, and they say it's a wondrous tale that he tells, facts that took place in his land 30 or more years ago. You know him? No, don't know who he is. You never listen to an old foreigner tell about the mysterious resurrection of a messiah who died on the cross? I don't know him. I've never met him. Try to remember. If he, this Peter, was the guest of Aulus and Pomponia, then the charge of conspiracy won't stand up. They could be saved. It depends on you. You know that isn't true. You would have them condemned through me. You talk about my father and my childhood, only to have me believe that you're a friend. You forget I am the Prefect of Rome. Hardly. I respect the authority, but not the violence. 
with the same frankness. Let me tell you that I am certain that the man the Christians call master is presently in this city. I am certain that his teachings are against the interests of Rome. And my main duty is to stop him in time. Follow me. I know where she is. No one must know we have met. I know nothing. Why Elijah was taken away or why it's she was... It's hard for me to believe you. <clears throat> Wasn't Elijah about to go away? Did she tell you that? We spoke of it, yes. That was a mistake. Elijah was not to mention it, not to anyone. Yes, but you don't know that Elijah and I... You're wrong. Elijah spoke about you to me. You know of my feelings and yet you accuse me. You didn't want her to go away. Of that I'm guilty. You prevented her returning back to her land, so as not to lose her. What you're saying is absurd. Even if I wanted to, I don't command the Praetorians. I'm not Nero. The name of Olus still counts for something. This... Here is Fayen's answer to a letter of ours. Elijah was taken away at Nero's command and at the request of your uncle, Caius Petronius. Yes, your uncle, and you say you know nothing. In a dream last night, I held a woman who seemed to vanish from out of my arms, as if she were made of clouds. I keep no woman by my side. Perhaps that is why I study my nephew's love for his Elijah. Where my sentiments fall short, I feed on the emotions of others. How many are there? Oh, the usual. Mm. Three measures of grain for you, Julius, from my master, the noble Petronius. Thank you. <laughs> and a lamb's hide for Cestius, there. Good. Your cloth of Livia for you and your son. On the way out, leave your togas. Give some cloth for Lucius. Don't forget to leave your togas. There, Caius Petronius offers the lamb's hide to you, Curio, and grain to Agricola. Keep moving. Men shall return their togas before leaving. Celestial garlands wrapping around as ever soaring accolades. Good morning, Eumopolis. Good morning. Vast visions do reach mine eyes. Walls so Herculean, rising powerfully in honest praise of Caesar's greatness. Yes. You composed this last night? I did. Very good. Oh, Caius Petronius. I have served you and your most noble father for over 40 years, mm. never asking more than your natural generosity. But now I need your advice. In Lenuvium, I have a small property. My neighbor has moved the boundary line and claimed three pear trees, an apricot, and two fig trees. Uh, yes, I shall inform the proper officials. Oh, thank you, noble Petronius. Oh, noble Caius Petronius. Labus Anicius had promised to sell me two slaves, but he sold me two freemen instead, and now they demand payment for their services. I have been embezzled, Caius Petronius. Uh, I will personally take care of the matter today. Thank you. Oh, I thank you, noble Petronius. And I pray that you tell Nero that I, Mamercus, await an answer. And you shall do that for me. Why did you do it? Because you had asked me to. I asked you? What are you saying? I saw how you were suffering. You'd said that Elijah was going away and you couldn't bear the thought of being far from her. So I thought you'd want to stop her. I did, so that I could talk to her some more, persuade her to stay. Oh, that's all very well, but uh, you know you wouldn't have succeeded. I suppose so. She doesn't love you enough? I don't know. It may seem brutal to you, Marcus, but I only did what you would have done had you been able. You were able, thanks to Nero. 
Yes, yes, naturally, thanks to the Emperor. I asked Nero that she be transferred to the palace. Naturally, I made no reference to the girl's intention of leaving Rome. And then, together, we hit upon a plan that pleased him no end, especially since I proposed it as a way of unsettling all his Plautius, whom he verily hates. Listen closely, and you'll end up thanking me, really. This evening, the Emperor will celebrate the anniversary of his birth. And according to tradition, everyone will bring him gifts. And everyone may ask a gift of him. But Caesar will only grant one gift. It's an indecent spectacle, you'll see for yourself. It's a contest to see if you can be the most servile. Contest? And? And so at the banquet, you will ask that Lyja Kalina, daughter of the king of the Lycians, hostage of the Roman people, be entrusted to you in your custody. Your request will be granted. And this will be Nero's gift. From that moment on, Lyja Kalina will live in this house by your side. And as for the rest, my boy, that's up to you. To have a woman live in a state of total subjugation would seem uh, unbearable to a reasonably sensitive man. To be able to do whatever you like with someone seems the height of freedom, but it's to the contrary. There's also something very, uh, almost, almost threatening about it. If a woman loves her man, she does whatever he wishes. Well, then perhaps love needs uh, certain limitations. There must be something that always eludes you, so that you can seek it. It's all so frustrating. The more you try to define love, the more it becomes banal. Why do you always try to understand things? Because I think a writer is naturally curious. And how can you tell if a woman loves you? From her eyes, from the way she looks at you, he once said to me, didn't you, Petronius? Well, Chrysothemis. And also from the longing tones of her voice. Or from her hands. From the way she moves them. My husband says love changes a woman's dress, that it can alter her way of dressing. A sure sign of whether she's in love or not. Are you dressed for love now? Perhaps, but not for tonight's banquet. Seems I've lost the good graces of Papaya. But not mine. But you're going to the palace where Papaya is, you terrible man. <laughs> Do you like them, Claudia? Do you approve or disapprove? <laughs> oh, no, you can't refuse. An invitation to the Emperor's banquet is not an invitation. It's an order. Your name is Acti. Am I right? Yes. My name is Acti. I'm Greek. I was a slave. Caesar gave me my freedom. I know. I've heard of you. <laughs> you mean you've heard what people say about me? No, everyone in Rome knows who you are. <sighs> One of the Emperor's concubines. I would say a woman the Emperor wanted to marry. <laughs> Instead, the wife of the Emperor is called Papaya Sabina. And that fine woman has given him a daughter. You may think I speak like this out of bitterness because Nero has cast me aside. And yet I want to tell you what I feel. Beware of Papaya. I don't know why you're here how long you'll stay. I was only told that I should tend to your needs. And when I saw you, so young, so sweet, I said to myself, Papaya will be hostile toward her too.
That one. Even after her marriage, when I was no longer a threat to her plans, Babea did everything to keep Nero away from me. <laughs> she forbid me to love him. But she couldn't stop that, for he is in my heart. Beware of her wickedness. Babea thinks that every woman is capable of doing what she herself has done. The divine Popea. Claudia. Avoid those whom you do not know. Dress her. Prepare her. If she is to attend the banquet, then she must be worthy of the honor. The Tribune, Quintus Polonius, offers the Emperor a masterwork by Nefer, the reproduction of an Assyrian Sphinx enameled with precious lacquers. The eyes are oriental gems. A precious emperor embellished with decorations of gold and ivory on the part of the consul Rubenius Blaudius. The Scribo family, the father Augustus and sons Marcus and Fabius, offer a gilded miniature of the Parthenon. Inside is a gem sculpted to the likeness of the goddess Athena. General Getulu Apinius. This head covering, worn by the Scythicus maid, handcrafted in the finest ebony wood. And coming forth, the full regalia of the Scythicus wood. Shield, lance, armor, and leggings. A trophy to your honor, Caesar, from a loyal servant who wishes you long life. To better interpret his gift, the general recalls that at the time the Ligarians had conquered the Swabians of Vanius and the Yatsages, but their king and commander was felled and killed by an arrow of the Yatsages. <laughs> Senator Fabius Euphranorius presents the emperor with a swan sculpted to the likeness of reality. Deem it not too modest, Caesar, for the work conceals a noble surprise. Lifting a cover of this inanimate sculpture, one releases a pure, snow-white dove. <laughs> Take it. I bear no gifts to Caesar, Emperor, but only homage to Caesar, the poet. This is a poem by Nero. He recited it to me by the sea at Antium on a warm summer afternoon. It was never written, but cast upon the wind. I preserved it in my memory, and this evening I offer it to all of you present here. Oh, promise me, my life, that this love of ours shall know eternity in joy. For only then may we await the night without the pall of anxiety. Here, near me, Petronius.
Church Euripides of Athens sings the tragedy of the royal Agamemnon, who forced by the will of the gods, sacrifices his beloved daughter Iphigenia. Woe is me! What can I say? Where to begin? What fatal yoke has fallen upon me? How fortunate are the lowly. They can find release in tears and words. A shameful thing for one of noble birth, though he be at the depth of misfortune. Ah, my poor child, soon the god of death will be her bridegroom. What suffering? I can hear her voice. Father, you would kill me? I would not wish such a wedding for you, and not for those dear to you. Give me a kiss. I will say to her, let me hold your hand. You must remain far from your father a long time. But I want to say nothing more to you. I cannot, for the dew of weeping assails me. If I touch you... <laughs> How can I refrain from weeping? My poor child. Normally, my performance is here over. But I know the words spoken by Iphigenia, too. Um, mm, you, Lydia Kalina. Come closer. On your knees and repeat after me. Father. Father. Kneel. Father. Do not have me die before my time. Do not have me die before my time. I was the first to call you father. I was the first to call you father. And I was the first you called daughter. Look at me! <laughs> but I may at least have this memory of you before I die. Have pity on me. Oh, on my life. Oh, why do you cry? They're not my words. They're the words of a great poet. Don't. I am only an actor who thanks you. This isn't the first time the child's been ill. What happened? Don't you dare touch her! Out! All of you, out! Oh, sweet love. Go away. Go away! Go away! All of you, out! <gasps> Make way. Make way for the litter of noble Petronius Arbiter. Way. What do you think will happen to Elijah now? Hmm? I just don't know. This evening before the farce at the banquet, I would have sworn she would be spending the night with you. I'm afraid Nero took me by surprise. Oh, this is the letter of Caius Petronius. What is it? I come from the house of Pisa. Camius, wh why are we stopping? Forgive us. We were waiting for you, noble Petronius. I'm Musius of the household of Piso. My master asked that you stop and honor his house. <laughs> At this hour? Piso has friends banqueting with him. The house will remain open all night. 
the only patrician I know who opens his house to guests on the same night a banquet is being held at the palace. I trust the oysters will be fresh. Brought by the swiftest runners from the coast, noble Petronius. <laughs> Tell your master mine arrive on horseback at a gallop, and he would do well to come to me instead. Don't despair, Marcus. All will be well. What is it? Who asks Henry? The noble Senator Paizo. Hail, Petronius. Hail to you, Paizo, and welcome to my house. I hope you'll forgive me, but after a night at the palace, I wasn't up to facing a conclave of friends. I only wanted to leave this. A letter from Seneca. Oh, Seneca. At your house? Tell him at his age he shouldn't stay out so late. In fact, he left very early and gave me this message for you. Mm. Do you know the contents? It was dictated in my study, in my presence. <laughs> I imagined as much. Seneca was a great philosopher, but now he's a senile old man. What is he trying to do? Reproach me in public? It's not a reproach. No? What would you call it then? A scolding you give a naughty child? Or a rap on the knuckles for an idle student? He talks here of republican ideals. Civil virtues. Doesn't the master know yet that the republic is over? Now that the world is happy under the sign of the empire. Nero is the savior of the world, hasn't he heard? He takes care of the public happiness. No, of what use is politics? Politics is dead. He would lecture me for not attending the Senate as I should. That's exactly what he said. The next time you see him, Paizo, ask him why I should attend. For what goals, what intentions, what purpose? For public concerns? I was a consul. Today I fulfill my public duty as a magistrate. Must I also attend the Senate? It's the place where the spirit of our fathers still lives. Yes, in fact, it's a place fit for the dead, all those white togas that look like shrouds. Tell Seneca the color white hurts my eyes. Ladder! 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 Very good, excellent. We shall now try the... We have come to pay homage to Nero. Emperor of Rome. Three fingers of the right hand held rigidly together strike the fleshy part of the palm of the left hand. This type of applause expresses... He's teaching new kinds of applause. His newest invention. Hmm. Very well, then. The roof tile applause. Ready? Fingers rigid. Applause! Excellent. And now, like bricks. Uh, uh. Hands cupped and crossed. <laughs> sheep! Sheep! They are sheep! They have the emperor they deserve. I do not look for loyal subjects. But an appreciative audience, Paganius. <laughs> what is it? Further denunciations of Hispanius Lenatis. Two more towns in Sardinia accuse him of demanding mm. higher and higher contributions, taking mm. advantage of his position as your representative. Next. The informers, Bebius Massus and Caro Cestius, through Matonus the lawyer, are blackmailing the Scriboni family. Uh, next. Octavius Sagitta, tribune of the people, has asked Pontia to leave her husband. It isn't clear whether he's in love with her or with her fortune. Next. Uh, Vitinius, the shipowner, with the money he has made embezzling on insurance, mm. is financing wagers on gladiators. Next. Fabula, wife of Rufus. <laughs> Next. As for the investigation ordered concerning the sect called Christians, 
I have sought and am seeking proof of the presence in Rome of their leader, a Galilean fisherman called Peter. I consider it essential to proceed in the interrogation of this individual. There is increasing evidence of his contacts and acceptance among patrician Roman families, mm. influential families. Names? None so far. It's a complicated matter. There are connections with our situation inside the Kingdom of Judea. Is this God of the Christians powerful? As all gods are powerful to those who believe in them. Bayon! A bull. A black bull. Sacrificed to the god of the Christians for the health of my little Claudia. Claudia has been touched by hands that are impure. Oh, you Romans. Your doctors are charlatans. That's so absurd. The pay has now given orders that no one is to speak to me. Consigned to silence is what they call it. If I speak to someone, if I ask for something, even if I cry out, no one answers. It's my fault. Everything that happens to you is my fault. You're speaking to me. Don't you know that a hundred lashes are given to anyone failing to obey Papaya's orders? That only applies to slaves. Oh, I forgot. You're a Roman citizen. That's no crime. Nor is mine. People are sentenced when they've done something. I've done nothing. They all look at me as if they're afraid of me. You're not afraid of me? You don't know me. I could be what they say. A barbarian witch that could harm you with even just a look. I think that we know better. I'm here to help you. The gods protect us. <laughs> Welcome to my house. Thank you. Terea and Deacus shall confront each other in a wrestling match. Study them well and make your choice. Terea and Deacus. Wager on the maiden who shall stay underwater the longest. Begin. You may wager until the first maiden comes to surface. Chrysothemus. From the way a woman dresses, you can tell if she's in love or not. But unfortunately, men have never understood that. <laughs> oh, 
let me massage him. <laughs> Careful, her massage is a caress. <laughs> Keep practicing. You haven't forgotten a little wager, and I'm anticipating a very vigorous and stimulating massage. I'm betting on Daicus. He's the strongest and most handsome. Not more handsome than me. You're not a contestant. He'll win, you'll see. You really think so? Uh-huh. Chrysothemis naturally thinks like a woman. She confuses beauty with strength. I understand at the moment, uh, Korea has no rivals. Isn't that true, Vitinius? Absolutely. I have a surprise for Vitinius. I convinced Correa to spare himself and let Daicus win. I bet heavily, of course, on Daicus. And should I win, I'll recover my losses for a whole season. But what if you lose? Pedanius, I hardly expected to see you. You haven't been to my house in years. I prefer to keep my evenings for myself. For my vices, let's say. Idiosyncrasies, yes. I, for instance, give parties. Also because I have trouble sleeping at night. Yes, thinking of your dead to Vitinius, eh? Hardly. No, no, on the contrary. I never think of my uh, losses as something squandered. They induce me to recall if I've had any adverse signs or ill omens, so that I might recognize them should they show up again. Yes, a very good practice. I, too, believe in omens. And at times, they take on the shape of friends, of old, sincere friends. <laughs> Omens that appear as friends are easier to recognize. Are we friends, Petronius? I would define us as two people who have an enemy in common. The enemy is no mystery. And dear Tegelinus is in no hurry. He's an expert at his dirty game. Then he mustn't be given any further weapons. For Tegelinus, our existence alone is a weapon against us. Your nephew, Petronius. Your nephew, Marcus Vinicius, can be a weapon against you. My nephew? He's but a boy. Tell him to give up Lyja. Try to explain to him that she's not the right person for him. Certain things Marcus doesn't know. Mind, I can only give you an opinion. From that girl, nothing but evil can come. There are difficulties? Yes. I understand, Pedanius. And I thank you. What does Pedanius mean exactly? Let's not play with words, Marcus. A warning is a warning. Nothing but evil can come to me from Elijah. What did he mean? I'm only repeating what he said. Pedanius spoke to you as if she were a criminal. Enemy of Rome and the human race. And that doesn't seem absurd to you. You talk as if you'd known her all your life. I must help her. I can't just leave her like that. If I were you, I'd get busy then. Spend more time at the palace. Find allies. Ask, plot. Pay if necessary. There's no time. And besides, I can't hold court like the others. Only you can help me. Don't ask this of me, Marcus. Don't ask me to ruin you. I ask that you help me free, Elijah. After which we can go off together swiftly and silently. Staying on in Rome would be impossible for us. To be in love as you perceive it is obviously beyond my comprehension.
she's sleeping, her little daughter. I used to have fevers too. I would dream when I had fever. Something I had overheard a servant tell. My father, on a fast chariot, knocking down and killing a child for no reason. I don't know what my little Claudia is dreaming about. She doesn't speak. Oh, she never asks for me. Mother says she uttered mysterious words. And that makes me uneasy. Strange. You're not at all like Popea. Oh, Popea enacts her suffering. I observe myself suffering. Popea believes that a mysterious and malignant power is taking your daughter's life. Yes, that's what her priests are saying. And you really believe in the wicked powers of the Slyja? She is a foreigner. She hates Rome and Rome's emperor. Let her free, and you remove any reasons for hatred. Listen to your sensitive heart, <laughs> an artist's heart. You saw how Elijah was moved during your performance. How could a girl like that wish you or your little daughter ill? Listen to your artist's heart. <laughs> I can't believe it. It doesn't seem possible, Marcus. I can't take credit. Petronius convinced Nero. You'll be out of here this very night. In your house? A hostage? Prisoner of yours? No, together and safe. You can do whatever you want with me. I want what you want. see each other this very night. No, no, don't. Not like that. As if we were never to see each other again. Should something happen, Marcus? Make way for the litter of the noble Petronius. Make way. Make way for the litter of the noble Petronius. Make way for Petronius. Make way for the litter of the noble Petronius. Make way for the noble Petronius. They're coming. <coughs> Make way. Make way for the litter of the noble Petronius. Oh, please. Can you help me? What happened? I broke a wheel and the horses ran off. Oh. Look. Give him a hand. Come. Hurry. Get the cart out of the way. This floor, one cannot see the holes in the wall. The wheel gave way. Through there! She used you only to escape. It's quite clear. Everything she said, everything she did, was for that purpose only. I have to find her. I have to understand why. Petronius! Master! Ah, it's noble to jealous. I was expecting you. Really? I'm always expecting you. One of these days, I'm sure you'll bring me the Emperor's polite but pressing invitation to open my veins. You are one of Nero's magistrates. 
Certainly you didn't come to tell me that in the middle of the night, did you, to tell me this? You ought to come with me. The palace? No, to the house of Pedanius Secundus, prefect of Rome. He was murdered two hours ago.